All right, welcome to the Dorm and Lunch and Learn. Today we have EVAP leak detection. Where did I get this idea from? You guys. Last month when we did the launch uh, sensor simulator, I asked you what would you like to see and you guys said EVAP and over here, we have a smoke machine. We have an EVAP test board that I use in classes besides a car. And we're going to show you different ways of leak detection. So first, let's get over. My name is G. Trulia. If you don't know me, well, you can read your handout. Your handouts should be able to be downloaded um, in there. Uh, Alex is on our other end doing that for us. So this Lunch and Learn will cover a quick review of the EVAP system, concentrate on how to find leaks in the EVAP system. We'll do live demos. So you could ask me a question like, hey, how would you go about trying to find that leak? There are 40,000 leaks, there's 20,000 leaks, and 10,000 leaks. That is a very, very minute hole, right? And trying to find that becomes very tough. So let's go over some of the stuff here. Back in 1970, so, hey, I was a young man there in 1970. Okay, still in high school, believe it or not, like my grandson who's sitting in today. But here's where it all started for EVAP. This is evaporative emissions that are hydrocarbons. Without hydrocarbons, obviously, we can't get suck, squeeze, bang, blow. And that means we wouldn't have a running motor, right? But this is on the other side of the motor. On the FTP, the Federal Test Procedure, 41 minutes, 19 seconds, 11.95 miles of drive distance, means nothing. It's a shed test. They put a car in a room, and at about 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, they look for emission leaks. So let's take back here how it started. It's like a baby. If you know how to crawl like a baby, you can learn how to walk and then run. So here's the basics. So in the old days, you just had a charcoal canister with a couple of nipples up here. These nipples, one vacuum, and one was basically for the fuel tank. And we had carburetors back then. So rather than the hydrocarbons going into the air, we allowed it to go into the charcoal canister. The charcoal canister's job is to trap evaporative emissions. Now, we also have something here called the TVS, thermostatic vacuum switch, or sometimes PVS, ported vacuum switch. Now, again, we're in the chat section, if you're hearing me. Um, I don't see a bunch of people that are in the chat area. Why don't you say a hi for typing the letter H if you're out there? Okay, up oh, there we got you. Oh, okay, you're all awake now. I'm, I know I'm disturbing your lunch, so I apologize, okay? So early on, we had that. These were two sources of fuel. The ported vacuum switch, or thermostatic vacuum switch, when it met the temperature of the engine coolant, sometimes oil, allowed the ported vacuum to come through and suck it into the charcoal canister. Then we would take fresh air from the bottom and allow it to flow through and go right into the carburetor. That's the red line you see there, okay? So just like opening up a beer can, in the old days we had can openers, right? Now you got pop, pop tops. But when you had to open a can up and you only put one hole in it, you couldn't get a lot out of the beer can. If you cracked the other end open, it vented. This system needs to be vented as well. Let's move on to 1980. OBD2, OBD Onboard Diagnostics, OBD1, 1988, OBD2 is going to be 1996. Here's what we did. The vehicle is equipped now with throttle body or ported injection. During this time, vacuum controls gave away to solenoids. So now you have a purge solenoid, and many times you're going to have a vent solenoid. But in the beginning, only a purge solenoid, okay? So purge solenoid. Is it normally opened or closed? Give me an O or a C. There's no delay, so you guys should be good. You can win a dormant hat if you give me the right answer, first guy. Who's the first guy? Type Doreen will tell you and type your email in. So we got C's, I think. Normally closed is the right answer. Very good. So OBD2, what we added here is a vent solenoid. Now, is that vent solenoid, another dormant hat, okay, is the vent solenoid normally opened or normally closed? 
That means it's normal state without electricity. And we're going to be looking at that on this board. We have a vent valve and we got a purge valve. This happens to be based off a Ford system. This is a vapor management valve, but same thing. It's a purge valve, right? So we said this was normally closed. That'd be correct. What about this one? What do we have there? Give me a C or an O. First guy gets a hat. Okay, I see answers coming in. You're going to have to slide down there, Doreen. And once we went to OBD2, OBD2, we introduced that valve in the back, as you can see here. We also did a fuel level sensor, okay, or otherwise known as FTP, fuel tank pressure, right? Fuel tank pressure. So the first guy with the O is put your email in and... The operation of the purge solenoid and the vent solenoids. Purge is closed. The vent is open. So what happens is once the canister collects hydrocarbon vapors, okay, where does it get the vapors from? No more carburetor. It gets it from the fuel tank. The vapors go into the canister. Once the canister is full, we need to get those vapors out. That's where the fuel tank pressure sensor comes in. If it sees there's a lot of pressure in the tank, the pressure is converted to voltage on your scan tool. Then what we do is, or the system does, it allows the purge valve to open up. Many times the purge valve is duty cycled. It could be 90-10, 90% on, 10% off, 80-20, 50-50, 30-70, you get the idea. It depends on the pressure that the tank sensor is sending to the PCM, powertrain control module. At that point, we could see if there's a flow rate coming out. How do we see a flow rate? Well, it can see by the, the degradation of the pressure in the tank, how it's degrading at what level, okay? Now, once it's open, Next step is it wants to test. So when you see your car fails an EVAP test, it pulses the front purge valve. Remember, normally closed. Then it goes to the vent valve, which is open. We got flow, right? We close the vent. We close the purge. We lock them together. And that means from here, Doreen's going to be on there. Beautiful. From here to here, it's closed. And we're trapping everything in there. Now you may have heard or read in service information, remember don't forget RTFI, read the freaking information. If we're on a Toyota system, there are six different EVAP systems they have. And the vent valve may not always be normally open, okay? That's why you need to go to service information and know what you're working on. Every year, a manufacturer may decide to change something. We don't know what we don't know, right? But everything is new, and if we are TFI, we read that freaking information, we get that much smarter, okay? And then you follow the diagnostic procedure. That being said, we see from here to here, we trapped all the hydrocarbon vapors. If there's a problem, and when we do this live, I'm going to go over that again. If there's a problem, it will decay down. And the fuel tank pressure sensor is actually going to show, hey, we leak down more than whether it is a 40 thousandths leak. Let's see if you can pull in tight on that. Oh, yeah. Okay. A 20 thousandths leak. These are the most common. This was older OBD2 standards, 1996. This here is later on from an update of OBD2 standards in 2021. And some manufacturers are now 10 thousandths. EPA would like zero leak. Does that make sense? They would like no leak. Bladder tanks control, by the way, for your knowledge, bladder tanks control vapors a lot better. And if you've ever been on a plane, you know they use bladder tanks in the wings to fuel it up. They don't want vapors floating around. Any questions right now? When you roll that down, I can't see if there's any questions. Okay, so here we got canister purge normally closed. You got a canister, you got a filler neck and a gas cap. And by the way, capless cars, let's talk about capless cars right now. 
capless, capless vehicles or cars means there's no gas cap over here. This is off and it has a restrictive one to two doors. All the new ones are two little doors. And we're going to talk about what happens here right now. So you know when you go to a gas station and your favorite gas station, if they're a good station, they keep their nozzles good like when I had a gas station years back. The end that goes in here, there's a spring on it. If the spring is broken and you go down deeper in the neck, the little flap door that's in there, you're going to bend it. And if you bend it, you ain't straightening it out. You know what happens? That flap door now is going to start leaking hydrocarbon vapors out because there is no gas cap to prevent that. Okay, So the cap is important, but most cars, I have now, I think, one, two, three vehicles with no gas caps. They're capless. So you go to the gas station, you don't have to do this. They found a lot of people as they get older or some of the boxes, my hand barely gets into the gas tank place and they can't turn the cap. This is what they call a one-click cap. That means when I take this off, it goes on and it locks one way and that's it. Some of them you hear <laughs> But if you don't have the threads in there right, you'll have a problem. Older ones were the ones with more threads. The newer style is like this, where it's just gonna lock with one thread. There you go, beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. You see the little the little tit mark right up there? And another one right here. That's where you're going to be locked. And good afternoon to you guys out there as well. Okay. So that is a capless thing. Fuel tank pressure sensor, FTP. Roll over valve. So if the vehicle is in an accident and it rolls over, well, hell, there's going to be a huge fire over there, isn't there? We could prevent that fire if we could prevent the gas from leaking out. That is called a rollover valve. The valve is a one-way check valve that will lock the fuel from coming out. You may also know of some companies that have an inertia switch. What car company uses an inertia switch to shut fuel off in case of an accident? Worth a dormant t-shirt. Okay, first guy with Ford, put your email in and you'll get a dormant t-shirt. Okay. Very good. So the fuel tank itself, older fuel tanks were metal, newer fuel tanks are composite. Okay, Composite tanks don't have a tendency to rust, right, because they're made out of plastic. But composite tanks could also leak vapor out. So could a metal, but composite tanks, you may think the plastic is really good or the composite material, but it can leak a hydrocarbon vapor out causing you a lot of aggravation. Read so many articles I've written in the past for Motor Age magazine. It's free, go to MotorAgeArticles.com uh, online or do a Google search, type my name in there, G Trulia, T-R-U-G-L-A-A, and you'll find some stuff there. Canister vent, normally open. Again, I want you to write over here, not every car is that open. It's the majority of vehicles. I bet if you've been to another EVAP class, guess what? Yay probably told you it's always open. It depends on the system. The Asian manufacturers, like Toyota, like Honda, what they do, they add extra solenoids. They have a fresh air side and they have a fuel tank side. So rather than just two solenoids, they run three solenoids. Read the system description. Operation and description in all data, pro demand, um, identifix, Motologic, whatever, are all going to be very helpful to you. You don't guess. If you, if you don't test right, you're going to guess. And if you guess wrong, you're not going to fix the vehicle, right? And the Schrader valve, reverse threads. So you see here, I have a special tool. And very good. Right here, this is limit. What is the pressure limit? on this Schrader valve that's in here. How much pressure should we put in the system? What is the maximum pressure for a dormant t-shirt? Maximum pressure. First guy gets it. Okay, three, four, half a pound, five pounds. Wrong, wrong, and wrong. 
It's okay to be wrong. One PSI, that is Joe. Joe, you are correct. One PSI, 28 inches of a column of water. Now, you got to have a little chart. And in our EVAP book, I have a chart. In our full EVAP class, we give you that because you may be reading something in millimeters. You may be reading something in bar. How much is one PSI in bar, a European standard? How much is one PSI in bar? Let's see, the first guy may give you something. I'm in a generous mood. One bar equals ah, an atmosphere, 14.7. Is that Tom? Yep, Tom is the first guy, 14.7, one atmosphere, or 15 pounds. So when we take this out, we unscrew this cap and note, I had a tag wore off all these years, but it's one PSI is maximum. Now, when I go in, I have a tendency to turn counterclockwise, right? That's going to tighten it. I need to turn clockwise. You see how I'm turning? Clockwise, and I'm going to take out the Schrader valve. See the Schrader valve, man? Oh, and by the way, do not, if you lose it, put a tire pressure Schrader valve in there. It is not the same. That's why they've done away with this, by the way. So I'll leave my Schrader valve up here, my tool. I'm going to put my little special piece here that's going to go to the smoke machine. That way I can put the cone in. I'm going to screw this on, and in a little bit, we'll be doing the leak detection on the tank. So I'm going to screw this in here, make sure it's good. I'm not going to hook my smoke machine up just yet, but that cone, this is what we're going to stick in there. But we need to baseline it first. So this will go in there, but I'm not putting it in until I know that smoke will be coming out. So we leave that to the side for now. All right. So here's how a modern system on OBD2 actually works. Okay. You have the fuel tank. There's our fuel pressure sensor right here. Okay. That goes to the PCM. The purge valve is controlled by the PCM. It controls the ground side. You have 12 volts going there. The vent solenoid is also controlled by the PCM. So remember, what we want to do here is the vent is normally open. It is allowing air to go in. Hydrocarbons from the tank go to the canister, and they are trapped in there. They collect. When the system sees the pressure sensor is high, we need to get the canister clear of the hydrocarbon vapors. How do we do that? The computer sends a ground signal to the purge solenoid, pulsing it on and off, on and off, on and off. And when it does that, it goes into engine vacuum. We suck the hydrocarbon vapors in to the motor. Now, one thing you want to be aware of, we have hot weather here in New York. Uh, wherever you are, you probably have it. If you fill your car up on a hot, sunny day, and the sun is beating down on it, you notice when you go to a gas station, you click the pump, and it clicks once, twice. Stop after two to three times. Don't keep going click, click, shake the car, click, click. You're taking up the hydrocarbon space that is left in the tank. That hydrocarbon space in there is to collect the hydrocarbon vapors, not like the old days, my 66 GTO, when gas was 20-something cents a gallon, for Exxon Supreme. I used to fill it up and gas would run right out of the neck right near where the license plate was. And the cap was a vented cap. That means it vented hydrocarbons out to the atmosphere. Those days are gone. Okay, The California Air Resource Board, that's CARB, they made rulings back in starting in the 50s and no need to get hydrocarbon vapors in the air. We trap them. But on that hot day when you fill your car up, and all the room of the tank is taken. They don't want the car to blow up, do they? So what do they do? If the charcoal can is already totally loaded, they're going to vent those hydrocarbon vapors to the atmosphere. Now, most of the time, there is enough room in the gas tank and in the canister to where once the vehicle is started, hydrocarbon vapors go in, Inject the pulse width shortens up because now you got a rich mixture from hydrocarbon vapors. Prior to OBD2, 
You know what happened? They never purged it until you went down the road, till it seen Prindle in gear. VSS, vehicle speed, okay? They had to see things running, grams of air going through a mass airflow sensor or map sensor changing. They don't have to do that on a new car. They could take those hydrocarbon vapors out, utilize them right away, and then cut back on fuel delivery. So they make the engine more economical and you get more MPGs. Any questions so far? No. Okay. Now here's the first thing here. GM Ford, many imports use this strategy. This is the vapor stuff. We kind of went over it. This uses engine vacuum. That's what we just talked about before. We got pressure. We see it here. Hydrocarbon vapors get stored in the canister. The vent is normally open. The computer can shut the vent solenoid and pulse the front purge solenoid and then shut the vent, shut the purge, and look for anything that's a problem. So here's what they have in common, vapor management valve. We had that right on the test board or purge control valve, solenoid operating canister vent, and a fuel tank pressure sensor. Now stage one is in this system is the system at rest. System at rest, pressure equalizes itself. You see that's open and that's closed. That means if the vent is open, and a lot of people go hold it, if the vent's open, won't the hydrocarbons go into the atmosphere? No. Because the charcoal is going to basically trap the hydrocarbon vapors. And if you've got equal pressure on both sides, right, nothing's going to go out. And that's what's done here. That's called system at rest. Weak vacuum test, pull an initial vacuum. That means the purge valve is normally closed, but now electronically opened by the PCM supplying ground. That will allow the vacuum to be pulled right out through the purge valve and clearing out the charcoal canister. Notice when we do that, here's the other hose going to the tank. The pressure sensor is going to see a pressure change because the vacuum is going to take it out. Oop. And then small leak test, it has the whole vacuum. Hold in vacuum is going to be the purge valve pulses. The vent is open. Close the vent, close the purge, and look for decay. And that's what we have here in these steps. Okay. So here in step one, the evap at rest, we kind of went over this. This is for you in your handout. Okay. If you have a question, because I'd rather get on the test board, I think I gave you all that info there. Stage two, pull in a vacuum, pulsed open, closed, then we shut it. Here's all the information there. So this is sometimes referred to as a weak vacuum test. If the system cannot be drawn down to this level, a P0440, a generic OBD2 code. So if it can't pump it down, it keeps trying to do it. Oh, we got a problem. Now, there are three types of EVAP. Who could name the three types of EVAP right now? This is vacuum. I gave you one. You got two more. See if you can type them in there. You get a t-shirt. Stage three, we hold the vacuum and we look for decay. We look for decay. And here is, you see we're closed and closed. We want to see if there's any leak in the system. That's where you come to your gauge. You know, people only look for smoke. You got to look where's the ball. And you should test your machine for the ball, no matter what brand it is. This one does vacuum and pressure. You'll see there's gauge on both sides. Zeros in the middle, vacuum and pressure. What system is pressure? And no one answered my last question. What are the three systems of EVAP? Well, since no one did it, I will tell you. Oh, do we have someone there? Uh, work in vacuum, natural vacuum, pressure, and natural decay. Okay, George, I'll give you that. And let's... Let's get George's email there. So vacuum is what we talked about. Pressure is LDP, write that down, leak detection pump, LDP. And natural vacuum leak detection is the decay system. What does that mean? When a vehicle is shut off, and by the way, make a note here, because the system could run 45 plus minutes when you have the key out of the car and the power button is off, that could show up as a parasitic draw. Always make sure the EVAP system is not running. And how that works is by natural pressure as gas sloshes around in the tank. That creates vapor pressure, okay? 
And what the vehicle does is look for that. It could shut the, the vent valve and the purge valve is closed. They look at the pressure itself and they could see, did it leak down in a few minutes? Okay. And if you've ever seen an OE test on either BMWs or Hondas or, you know, Ford Motor Company, they actually show you graphically how that works. Some decay is allowed because nothing is going to be 100% sealed. That's why you have a 40 thousandths on older ones, a 20 thousandths on most of the cars you're working on. And if you get a 10 thousandths, that is newer vehicles that are super tough to find a leak on. And let's see, stuck open purge valve. Well, you could have a sticking valve. I had a good one that I wrote on a Ford um, with a 2096 DTC. 2096 is a rear O2 and system too lean. And I'm like, what the hey? The OE manufacturer did not give you a trouble tray. It also had a 2098, so bank one, bank two, system lean. Had to be something in common. It wasn't a leak in the intake manifold. It wasn't a leak at PCV, positive crankcase ventilation. It was a purge valve that wouldn't always leak. It stuck. And when you take your power probe out to test any of these solenoids, first thing you want to do is always make sure, key off, unplug the power. What side has power now you put the key on? Is it this side with power or that side with power? Because if you put your power probe in there going, well, it's a solenoid. I can go either way. You see this here? This solenoid has a diode in it. And it's probably real tough to see. But there is a little plus or minus mark. Uh, you're pretty close to that. Let's see. See if you can go. Can't get any closer. Move that out of the way. Can you come down a little bit? Yeah, I don't think you can really see it, but believe me, look out of Ford, you're going to see a plus or minus on this, and a plus or minus means there's a diode in there. Now, diodes are built into this. This is made by one of the German manufacturers. You got Bosch, you got Pierberg, you got Continental, you have uh, Sachs and Siemens. They're all German companies that make parts for American cars, Asian cars, and obviously Euro cars. Does that make sense? Okay. So here we got that test. We want to make sure something is working. These are some of the tools that you'll use. You can use a gauge that we used for years. This would be a manometer. That's pretty tough. Or a vacuum pump. And before they ever came out with smoke machines, a vacuum pump. I got a question. I will give you a hat and a t-shirt. How many times should you press the smoke button? How many times should you press the smoke button if you don't see smoke coming out anywhere on that car? How many times? Do you keep pressing it? Do you keep pressing it? So that smoke button will keep the smoke on how many minutes? Five minutes. Tells you right here. Five minutes. But how many times do you press it? How many times do you press it? Let's see. So we have once, none, three times, one time. Okay, everyone's wrong. Write this down. Don't press it more than twice. When smoke condenses, what does it turn into? Oil. Oil. You know what happens to that charcoal canister when you keep pressing the button? You go, I'm going to find the smoke somewhere. No, you won't. Smoke is a hydrocarbon. What's the job of a charcoal canister? <gasps> Collect hydrocarbon vapors. Look at that. You knew that crap, right? Hydrocarbon vapors. So if you have smoke that's not coming out anywhere, you look here or you look in the gas tank. Now, getting back to high school days in chemistry, two likes attract, right? And the one with more volume, ooh, that's in the gas tank, Jay. Yes, that's right. If you got more volume than your smoke machine could put out, the smoke will be pulled right into the fuel and you won't see the leak in most cases. Not saying in never cases, in most cases. Does that make sense? Okay, let's see if we got any questions there. 
go into the canister, you get a vacuum leak. When you put your smoke machine on and this solenoid is not closed, you should see smoke coming out, meaning the vent valve is open. If you don't, we have spiders and wasp and hornets love going in where, in fact, you may have seen when you're fueling your car up, hornets, wasps, bees like coming around. They like the smell of hydrocarbons. They sometimes will nest under there, and especially those little spider pain in the necks, and this won't work real right, okay? Won't work correctly. So we have that, and remember I said capless car? Here's the special tool. These things are about a hundred something dollars. They have to go in and go past two little flap doors. Now I'm going to give you a big hint here. Get yourself a baby funnel. Get duct tape. You know the baby funnels that come with a capless car? Every car should have one. Although my new truck that we bought, there was no funnel in it. So you know what the salesman did? Oh, no problem. He went to another truck and took a funnel out. That's probably what happened to mine. Even though it just came in from being made, someone may have done that or they forgot at the factory, right? But you take that funnel, cover the top. We have two spare ones here we bought off our local parts store. And what we do is cover it and we put a little hole through there so the cone, only the cone could fit through the duct tape. That way we could smoke it from the rear to the front, from here to the front. That way if you have a, in the real world, now if you happen to live where there's not snow and salt, well, you're probably somewhere where I wish I was anyway. But at any rate here on the East Coast and many places, including Colorado and Utah and stuff, there's snow, there may be salt around, there's corrosion, you know, that is gonna leak. If you go from here and you see smoke coming out right away, that is where the problem is. If you smoke it all the way from the front of the vehicle, you may not see that because gasoline would prevent that. The gasoline, remember we said two likes attract, it would take the smoke and you would never ever see that. We're gonna talk about an alternative called bullseye, okay? And bullseye is one good way to do it. By the way, an approved General Motors tool. This is approved by GM for the dealerships. It comes with a special die. You build the customer out for this foam, and we're gonna be using this. We're gonna show you a couple of ways. We're gonna use a multi-verse like black light. Means it can do different spectrums of dye. Not all dyes are created equal. That means if you have a black light and you're looking for the dye, you may not see it. If it's not on the spectrum of the dye that you're putting in from the smoke machine. Does that make sense? So, same with air conditioning, by the way. Okay. So here we have that. These are the caps for the gas cap. Don't bother buying them. These are like 40, 50 bucks for a piece of rubber. You always use your flow gauge. You want a pressure vacuum machine. This here, anyone know what that is? That's ultrasound. This is ultrasound. I have both of them. This thing was like 3,500 bucks used by NASCAR. So you could hear if there was a leak, but very difficult, even with headset on, very difficult when the shop's super no noisy, someone busting a tire down, someone, um, you know, making a lift go up and down. The noise in a normal shop, it's hard. But it was a good way. I caught a lot of leaks using that. And ultrasound is good for other types of problems on vehicles as well. A gas analyzer, well, you could take, I used to take this particular gas analyzer or for an OTC unit, cut the hose, have a short hose. You don't want 20 foot of hose. It's going to take you a year and a day when you're going like this, trying to find a leak. Okay, you got to move slowly. You can't do this. That's where this thing comes in. This is only CO2. And same thing, you're not gonna go like that. The pump is really high. And later when we do it, since we're in a closed classroom here, when I put CO2 in here originally, this thing's probably gonna beep itself to death. That's probably what's gonna happen, okay? But we'll show you how it works as well. So here's the smoke machine. Always look at the flow ball. What do you think about this? You see we're over 40 thousandths? Everyone see where that ball is? Let me blow it up there for you. Let me blow it up. 
The ball is over the 40,000th mark. Look at that baby. That means you got a leak. Now, if you had a huge leak, the ball would be all the way at the top. If you had no leak, the ball would be pretty far down. Okay? That's how you tell what's going on. Okay. This one, look at the leak this thing had. The ball is all the way at the top. The ball should also be at the top when you're testing your equipment. Are you really blowing smoke out of that machine? Well, gee, I looked at it before. I seen all the smoke. You think you were at a hookah party, right? Well, no, 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 no. First of all, don't breathe it in. Always hold it away from you and see if you got a good volume of smoke. But once you plug it in, do you know if smoke's coming out? If you got a leak like this, you got something coming out of that vent at the back, which we will take a peek at in a minute here. Look at this car. You think this car had a problem? Someone, not us, this had a broken pad on this BMW Mini, and someone cracked the canister. Otherwise, would you normally see smoke coming out of the canister? No, you know why? You said before, G, that smoke is oil, it's a hydrocarbon, and the job of the charcoal canister is to trap the hydrocarbon vapors, yes. And the fix was just put in a new canister, no more problem. And you see we had to use a block of wood here besides our pad. The reason being, these guys broke off, or someone broke off, the lifting pad. Here's a quick BMW for a small leak. And using here uh, AutoLogic, you can do this on the Opus IVS scan tool. It says minor leak detected. It goes through a major leak first on BMW, then goes on. We're connected to the back where BMW tells you to check, go right into the canister. How about our ball? Oh, it's above the flag mark, right? Above 20 thousandths. We confirm it again. We, we let the scan tool do it to tell us, hey, you still got a leak, dude. You did not fix this car. We use the gauge here with CO2. Normally, I just use the smoke machine, but sometimes we use the gauge. You got to put it in the green when you start. And here, notice we're out of the green. The CO2 decayed over time. So within three minutes, maybe five minutes, if it doesn't hold the pressure, we got a problem. And look how far it went down. Now we start looking, no smoke was seen. Using the bullseye setup, it was coming out of the DMTL, the canister. This is basically, no smoke was visible here. This is the connector plug to the pressure sensor on the canister. The foam goes on one color, pink, and turns yellow if you're leaking. You would never find that. Now, in case you think I'm BSing you, make a little leak, okay, and use your smoke machine. You know what's going to happen? The smoke going through a very small orifice will break down and turn into oil and not get through where you're going to see it. That's the important thing. That's why CO2. Now, by the way, over here, all the way down, this is my CO2 tank. We use a big tank. You can get little tanks, but this is what we use for air conditioning. I have gauges here that go up to 200 PSI. These gauges, let me pull that out there a little bit. Okay. This is a Harris gauge set. Okay. And you could buy this. I have it regulated low because... I don't want to put too much pressure in my smoke machine that's regulated on this type at one PSI, right? And how many times do we press that button? No more than two. Correct. Good. All right. Let's move on to do this live test in here. Look at that. I still got plenty of time. So the first thing I'm going to do, number one, I got to make sure I got power to the smoke machine. Green light is on. I'm going to press the button. I'm going to keep this away from me. Now you can hear it gurgling. It is heating up and the smoke should be starting to come out. I can see some of it here. Not sure if it's visible on camera. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Your hand oh, look at that. Yeah. I dreamy genie. It's coming out of the bottle. Right? Oh. Look at that. <laughs> okay. So we see that. Now I take it and I'm going to put it in 
I got to shut my gas cap. Oop. This is up front to where you would have, oh, excuse me. This is right here. Now, make a note. On here, that was a vent. On here, you don't have these valves anymore. They did away with them because too many people messed things up. And what do I mean by that? They, they stripped it. They broke it. If you come across one broken, all you need to do is put a direct line. And you would have to break that line open. So now with smoke coming in, I want you to take notice. What happened back here? You see the smoke coming out? Yeah. See if you can get a picture right there of it, can you? Oh, yeah. So the smoke is coming out. That means the vent valve is open. I think it's a little tough. Yeah, I can see it below. Okay. So everyone see that. Now watch. Just like you would take command of your scan tool, bi-directional, or power probe, and we would have to disconnect the wire, key off, power button off, take the wire off. What side is positive or negative? It's called indexing. We would take it off, and we would see with our, our power probe, is this side power, is that side? Let's say this side is power. We would put an appropriate connector in there, put the power probe tip in that side on that connector, put the ground on the other side, and we would do this. Now watch, the smoke has stopped. No more smoke. What's going on in the gas tank? Smoke should be dropping in. So take a look at that. I see it from here, but you may not be able to see it online. So watch, we're gonna let more smoke get in there. Our flow ball is bouncing along. Oh, and what I didn't show you in the beginning as smoke is going in here, but I'll show you when I disconnect it. When we have that hose off, the ball should go all the way to the top. So right now I can tell the system has less than a 20,000th leak. And smoke is dropping in. Can they see that on the camera? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now once smoke is in there and you're trying to find the leak, you take your black light, mm -hmm. okay, and we could look everywhere for dye. Now, by the way, dye takes a while to come out. And remember, if we smoked it from the cap, what did I say to use? A capless funnel put duct tape and make a little hole up top, and you would come down and look at it. Now, if we look inside, you see that greenish in the back? Yeah, you can see the greenish in the back near the, the screw bolts back there. See it? Right? You guys see that? Mm -hmm. That is dye right there. Yes. That is dye that has collected when the smoke condensed. So, in case you don't believe me, what you do later on today is save your soda bottle from lunch, rinse it out, make sure it's dry, okay? Or get a good Gatorade bottle, it's easier in a Gatorade bottle, smoke the hell out of the bottle, then close the top, and you'll see smoke in there like this. Yeah, it's hard for you guys to see there, but there's, there's a lot of smoke in there. It's all foggy, okay? So this is all smoked up. So you would have to try to find a leak with your black light or smoke coming out. You don't see smoke coming out, right? You would go all over the place, and if you don't see smoke coming out, oh, look at the hose here. Can they see that? Mm -hmm. Could they see the green? Yep. That is the smoke that condensed and left oil behind. Now, if you didn't see that anywhere on the vehicle, how are you going to find the leak? One of the tests that BMW and Honda used, they don't recommend, especially BMW and Toyota. Now, smoke went off. That was five minutes. I'm going to put it back on. They recommend using a vacuum pump. But a vacuum pump, you're pumping, pumping, pumping like a mighty vacker or whatever. And you get it to a certain level. Then you want to see if the vacuum needle drops. You know how hard it is to find a vacuum leak? Now, I do have a tool from Snap-on. I think it was their Blue Point division. That was a little box, and it shows you vacuum or pressure leaks. 
and you would have to go all over it. If you got a fan blowing in the shop, this time of year we have air condition going in the shop, okay? But most places don't. They have fans, right? And even with the air condition sometimes, we got to shut off the air condition uh, output in that particular bay we're working in. Because what's it going to do with the smoke or CO2? It's going to take it away, okay? So we're going to look at this thing here called bullseye. Anyone out there have bullseye? And by the way, this is being recorded. It will be put up on the website so you can review it, and the handout will be there as well. So I'm going to put this on. It's probably going to beep like a madman. It takes a few minutes to warm up. So you can hear the little pump motor going. No lights came on except these lights here. That's to help you look for where you're going. It is not a black light, okay? And it does tell you, you know, some warnings here. Never put this tip in any liquid. So we'll warm it up as the smoke machine is still doing its thing. And I will take that cap off in a minute. We'll see if we have any leak once this warms up. Now you hear it? It beeped right away. So it is picking some CO2 up right in the air. Okay. That's because we're in a closed room with air condition on. So I would have to take this away. I'm going to take it off high. And I'm going to put the sensitivity to low. You have three sensitivities. Low, medium. High is going to pick everything up. Usually, it'll do it. So we would go across the system. And we would see if we had any leak. Now, you don't see smoke coming out of there, right? We still have smoke going in. We still got smoke going in. So what we would have to do is spray some of this foam. A little bit messy. But some of the foam right here in the corner is starting to turn yellow. Now, if I did this here, let me make it more obvious. Let's uh, turn that off. Let's get some of that smoke coming out here. And by the way, you see how the smoke's coming over this way and the machine's going crazy? Look at the yellow. Look at the yellow. See the yellow up top? Look at the pink here. Look at the yellow. Pull in right on that yellow back here. Oh, okay. Come down a little bit. Dripping yellow all the way down. So when you're looking for a leak... Smoke may not be coming out. This tool is going to be, let me shut this off before we get smoked out to death. This is going to be a way to do it. Any, any questions out there? And by the way, you should always use the straw that comes with it. I just had Doreen grab the new one with the straw. And we build this out to the customer. Before they used to come in big cans, you don't even have to shake these anymore. You, you spray it in a spot and you'll find it. That's why it's called bullseye. And look at the top. Look at the top. So remember, you saw no smoke coming out of there, right? You see it's all yellow? You think you're going to be able to find that leak? And, and let's put this, look at the smoke. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Less than 20 thousandths. It is finding less than a 20, oh, smoke back on. It's finding less than a 20,000 sleek. Look at that ball. Here's the proof. Any of you, you using this out here, does the smoke have CO2 in it? The, I only use CO2, let me shut this noisy thing off. You should never use air pressure in your smoke machine. You notice I got the hose here? 
our shop hose. So you can see this is a regular shop hose only used on our CO2 machine. But when we want to use the smoke machine, let's say we're doing a water pump on a car and we want to make sure there's no leak coming out of the water pump gasket. We can just take our air hose, put it in here, and it's acceptable to use air. Now, caution, caution, caution. <gasps> What's a caution, Jake? Well, with air, you could have from your compressor, especially this time of year, if my guys didn't blow the lines out, you have moisture. Moisture goes in your machine, and it's not good. Moisture goes inside an EVAP system, could corrode a valve, okay? So you don't want any of that. Does that make sense to everyone? So CO2, argon, uh, do you have an argon tester? Answer is no. Now, I don't have, for years I use nitrogen. Nitrogen is a smaller molecule than CO2. CO2 is a very small molecule, smaller than air, smaller than refrigerant. While, it is, while it's easy to pick up, CO2 is very, very easy to find. This system here is not all that expensive. Um, it has made me tons of money. We found the porous wheel on a Mercedes-Benz that the dealer couldn't find, sent to two tire shops, they couldn't find it. We removed the air from the system and put CO2 in it. Um, look at the article where I found a Jeep on an EVAP problem. It was to the dealer and to a couple of shops. Came in, it had a porous gas tank. They replaced every part but the gas tank, and I wound up seeing it. I couldn't believe it. I was beta testing at that time for the uh, for ATS, and the thing's beeping near the gas tank. I'm like, I don't see anything. I don't see any smoke. Well, I put the foam on it. The foam turned yellow just like it did up here. I'm like, how the hell? I took the whole tank down, got all the gas out of it. I dried it out, smoked the living whiz out of it. This thing was loaded up with smoke. Nothing was coming out near that spot. I took this again, beep, 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 sprayed the foam. Sure as hell, there was a problem. That's because the tank was porous. CO2 being a smaller molecule and does not break down like the oil, uh, the smoke turns into oil. Yes, question. Can soap and water be effective alternatives? Oh, soap and water now, you know, is the old days. Like Osmobiles and Pontiacs and Saturns and Plymouths. They're out of business, your ass will be out of business. This is not a professional way to do it. Soapy water is going to be very difficult, not impossible. And by the way, if you use the stuff from what we use for tire leaks, the tech solution, it's this purple solution, that bubbles way better. When you're in one of our classes, we do have... A, a thing testing the exhaust system for leaks limited at 5 PSI, not with a smoke machine, with regular air, and we take that purple solution rather than a Dawn dishwashing detergent for soapy bubbles, and that stuff bubbles like 10 times the amount that soapy water would. So it's a good question, but it's old school, and old school will not make it in today's advanced world. Remember, you're looking at leaks 10 thousands, twenty thousands, forties are all gone. You know, we don't work on many old junk boxes, as I call them. That means a car would have to be older than 2001. It was 1996, the first OBD2 ruling, was not to check EVAP. It was every car had to have an oxygen sensor heater, an oxygen sensor, and catalyst monitor. Later on, EVAP came and they tightened the standard up, and in about 2001, they started dropping from 40 thousandths leak down to 20 thousandths. Any other questions out there? Okay, let me shut this thing off. Oh, I did want to show you this. So, well, you got to baseline it. And where is my ball? Look at the ball. And here's what you do. You can take the hose. You see the ball up top? Everyone see the ball up top? Yep, they got it. Now, you see what I just did? Where did the ball go? I crimped the hose to block it off. You can put your finger over it, but again, not advisable to have anything, even under low pressure, go into your skin, right? Safety reasons. So here, I proved that the ball, my gauge is good. You know what happened one time? A hose broke inside the machine, popped off. 
So if you didn't do this to see that the ball can go to the top, right? To the top, we crimp it. The ball should be at the bottom. Okay? So let me shut that baby off. Let's go back to the slide, and I'll entertain any questions that you may have. Hopefully this was helpful to you. You always shut your tank off. I'm turning the, the valve down. Um, we have, if you want to see us live, we have a full day event coming up, and that is September 23rd, 2023, from 8 to 6 p.m. It's at ATC, Automotive T uh, Training Center, in um, Warmaster Campus in PA. There will be myself. I am doing a, uh, what class am I doing? Advanced Drivability class. There is my buddy Pete Meyer. Pete Meyer is doing Advanced Lab Scope. Uh, my other friend, Kenny Zanders. Kenny will do in CAN bus. These are all updated in new classes, guaranteed you learn something. We will have vendors there and, and sponsors, so you can see some new equipment, some stuff. Uh, we have Oscar Gomez doing two classes in Spanish. That would be the electrical class and the um, critical thinking class. So if your guys just speak total Spanish or you want to see it in Spanish, the books will be in English when we do our Spanish classes throughout the country. We've asked our Spanish-speaking students what they would like the material in, Spanish or English, and they basically said they want it in English. Just like all data and ProDemand, Identifix, and Motologic, all in English, you know, but their primary language is Spanish, so Oscar does a great job. He's one of the guys that works for us at Dorman, and uh, we are getting close to the end. Well, if you have questions, we will entertain them. What kind of smoke machine do you use? Uh, this smoke machine here is the Smoke Wizard. Um, all of these machines, except ones that use baby oil, are all made by one company. CPS owns all of them, so it's a Vacutech, it's a Snap-on, it's an OTC. They all use oil with dye in it. They had a patent on it. The original guy who made the smoke machine Larry Goge was a friend of mine. He's been in this building multiple times. He started in Texas. He got the idea from smoking a cigar, and in the old days, you would take the puff and throw it into a vacuum line into the motor, and you would find where it was smoking out of. That's how he came up with the idea of the smoke machine. Be careful with the one with baby oil, okay? It's not that it's a bad machine, but baby oil is not recommended by OEs. And no dye in it, by the way. Question. Yeah, what would you do in a case where you've activated smoke twice and still haven't pinpointed the leak? Very good question. What would happen if I activated the machine twice and I see no smoke coming out? If I didn't have the CO2 set up, I'm going to look carefully at the charcoal canister. Why? Because that traps, traps hydrocarbon vapors. And I'm going to look at the gas tank. That's what I would do. But again, it takes money to make money. You gotta buy equipment every month. I show you something, some sort of tool. I'm not being paid by the tool companies. You come to my shop, this is what I use. This is how we diagnose and fix cars, okay? So if you buy the right equipment, it's like having an open-end wrench compared to a box wrench. But if you're smart, what did you do? You bought a ratchet. Or nowadays you got electric guns, like, like my snap-on guns, my Ingersoll Rands. That's what you're going to do to make your life easier. So, up. Oh. One more. What's wrong with baby oil? It is less expensive. Baby oil is less expensive. The machine's less expensive, but the OEs go against it. And the issue with that is they'll tell you in some SAE papers, don't use any smoke. But if you're going to use smoke, you see the dye, at least I can see where it was. With the baby oil, there's no dye in it. So that is the issue. They do make an ass-kicking, high-volume smoke machine that you can use with baby oil for diesels. So that's okay. I'm just telling you what, and the company was a sponsor of TST for a long time. They kind of got pissed off at me because I don't lie just to get money off of someone. And TST is a non-for-profit group. 
So they got a little bent out of shape, but you could read SAE papers. You don't want, you don't want that. What smoke product contains dye? What smoke product contains dye? All of the snap-on machines, OTC, Smoke Wizard, Maco machines, I can go on and on, Vacutech, that was patented. I gave Larry Goge the idea. That's why I own a ton of smoke machines. They sent them to me for giving them the idea. Didn't get any money for the patent, but what the hell. How about Redline? Redline's the baby oil company. Very good for high smoke volume for diesels. I wouldn't use it in EVAP. And by the way, they made a claim. Here's to be careful. You see this machine back here? This, how many of you work on hybrids or EVs? This is not a smoke machine. This is an air purifier machine. There is no oil in this machine. There's nowhere to put oil in this machine. It is the factory approved tool for Ford Motor Company and Mercedes. The batteries, high voltage, have to be tested for a leak. You use the flow gauge. If there's a leak in the case, it's no good. Redline was saying use the smoke machine. If you put oil in any of the batteries, you will ruin the high voltage battery. So we got to be careful sometimes with advertisement and companies. They may not be telling you the full truth. Maybe not on purpose, but I'm just telling you for your knowledge. My job as an educator is to make sure you know the right stuff to do. And real quick before we go, if you think this was helpful, I'll answer more questions, but some people got to get off. Hit the letter Y. If it was helpful, Y. If you thought I sucked and it's not helpful, put the letter N in there. Okay. And if you want to see something next month, I'm always looking for ideas. Please type that in and I review all the info. What's the next question, Dory? Can too Dory? much smoke contaminate the charcoal canister? Yes. That's why you only press it twice. Is too much smoke contaminate the charcoal canister? Yes. It will coat the charcoal pellets and the charcoal will not be good enough to, and activate to pull in the hydrocarbon vapors. Can you put dye smoked oil in baby oil machines? Can you put, I don't know. I don't know that answer if you can put it in there. You probably could, but I'm not sure. Okay. okay. So I want to thank everyone for coming out. I'm two minutes over. Look at that. Your lunch, you're all nauseated by now. Um, we want to thank you from uh, Dorming Training. And we hope to see you. Let me get this full screen here. Okay, what was your question? And I'll try to get the answer. Hey, that's David. I asked the question and still not get an answer. David, what's the question? You say you don't know. What's David, the question, David? Leonardi. What's your question? Thank you guys for all those whys. We appreciate that. So, David, type your question, and I'm still here. Chrysler ESIM next month. By, by the way, ESIM, that is a little, little valve that goes back and forth. Many times people put them in the wrong way. You need to index it. Um, we'll have to do that sometime in the future. We're not just going to stay on EVAP. But give me other questions. E David, I don't see your question. Doreen is rifling through here. So David, if you're still on, type your question in, and I'll be more than glad to answer you. Thank you guys again for your time. We'll see you next month. Tomorrow, heavy-duty lunch and learn with my buddy, Swede Owen. Okay? And thank you from New York here. I am G. Trulia. And let's see if David's question, do we see anything there with David? Not that David. No. So, David, I mean, you can still type it in if you're on. I'm sorry that if you did have a question, missed I missed it or Doreen missed it. Um, but... Thank you very much. Is bullseye good for batteries? Yeah, bullseye is um, good for high voltage batteries. Uh, General Motors is looking uh, and probably will approve it very soon as well as other companies. One little leak in a high voltage battery and you're in deep trouble. You'll be needing a new battery. The case has to be sealed and that is uh, important. If you have a question, uh, you can Email me at gtrulia at dormanproducts.com. That's gtrulia at dormanproducts.com. I think Doreen is typing that in right now. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks from Denmark. Denmark, thanks for watching. Okay, so thanks from California. Well, I may be out in California next week teaching. You can go check with O'Reilly's Auto Parts. Uh, where's that place I'm going to be in California?
um, near Ontario, California. Oh, I got David's question. Okay, David. If you disconnect the line going to the canister from the purge valve, do you get a vacuum leak? If I disconnect the line from the purge valve. From, yeah, disconnect line going to the canister from the purge valve. Okay. Well, the line here on this going to the purge valve. Do you get a vacuum leak if you do so, that? So, well, that would be, let's look at the system here. Let's pull it up. So, here's your purge valve. Here's the canister. If I pull that, on, no. would I get a vacuum leak if I'm sucking on vacuum? And, yes, we would have a problem because we would have an open. We would get decay. So what would happen with the ball? It'd be like, you see the canister purge should be closed, David? Okay. If the canister purge was open, well, you'd just be pulling and pulling and never have a sealed amount. So yes, there would be a leak. Now, a vacuum gauge is going to be totally different. Okay. You'd be pumping, pumping, pumping. It's like open end and not having anything sealed. So yes, that would be a vacuum leak. I hope that answers your question. And thank you guys again for coming out. The line going to the canister, I get vacuum, but fuel trims do not change when the purge valve activates. Okay, so if you're not pulling fuel, see here is what you don't know. If the purge valve is open and you have hydrocarbon vapors being pulled, and how would you tell you're pulling hydrocarbon vapors? Well, what you would want to make sure is that the canister per uh, the canister purge the fuel tank pressure sensor let's say it's at five inches of water you'd want it to change to a negative number that means you're actually pulling something out look at the oxygen sensor reading does the reading go up look at short-term fuel trim if not try introducing a uh, a propane or a carburetor cleaner or something to see if your fuel trims are changing based off that, okay? I don't see the handout. The handout is there somewhere. Um, maybe if, um, uh, Alex, if you're still on, could you pop the handout? Um, we will have it on the rerun. So this will be up on the, on the website. Okay, and there's the handout again. Thank you, Alex. I really appreciate that. Any other questions before we go? Look at that. You guys are good. Seven minutes past your lunch. The <laughs> boss is not yelling yet. Okay. But hopefully the stuff here, if smoke's coming out of the vent valve, can HC come out of the canister if it's saturated capacity? Yes. So there's something called, that's a good question there, whatever your name is, uh, Pierre. Pierre. So, um, and that's not our Pierre, it's a different Pierre. Mm. But if the canister is full of gas because someone click, 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 right? They're always clicking the gas pump. What's going to happen, the liquid fuel separator is a diaphragm. If the diaphragm rips, raw fuel will go into the canister. If gas is leaking out of the canister, the only way to tell the canister is bad is you have to weigh the canister, okay? And then you would put a new one in. But, but, if you didn't change the liquid fuel separator, you put a new canister in, you know what's going to happen to the canister? Raw fuel is going to go in there again. So you got to find why did the canister have gasoline in it? It should only have fuel vapors. Very good question there. Um, That's it. Okay. So times, we're always on Eastern time here, the real time as I say. But if you want to see me out in the Ontario, California area, I'll be out there, I think, next Tuesday, Tuesday. Uh, doing a hybrid EV class. Check with O'Reilly's Auto Parts. We have Pete Meyer all over, and we have uh, uh, other instructors, including Kenny Zanders out there. Go check with O'Reilly's Auto Parts and some other auto parts companies. I'll also be in the Dakotas, South and North Dakota, coming up in September. Uh, Ken Zanders will be out in the Seattle area for us, and... Uh, We'll be all over the place. We'll see you next month on A Lunch and Learn. Don't forget tomorrow, heavy duty, ABS. Even if you're not a heavy duty guy, you're going to see some tricks. How to test ABS, all free, brought to you by Dorman Products. We thank you for your time. From New York, I'm G. Trulia. Have a great...
day. Thank you.